Hey, Shani from SpeedCubeReview.com. So let's talk about the SpeedCube board game. I just kind of made this up. It was first just sort of in my head and I did it without actually having a, a board. But some people were asking about making it into a board game, so I decided to do that. And you can do this without the board, but I'll have the board to print out on, through the link in the description. Now what you need is, the board or not, a few cubes. So you can use two cubes or more. So I've got three here. Something to mark your place on the board. So I'm going to use some old caps from the GAN 356, a version 1. And a timing device. So you can either use a phone or a timer. And that's it. Now this is something that you can play on your own. Or you can play it with multiple people. The idea is that you have multiple cubes though. So the, the thing that kind of led me to do this was I... I wanted to find ways of just seeing how different cubes performed, what I felt more comfortable with. Instead of just doing like an average of a hundred of one, then an average of a hundred of another, I wanted to be a little more fun. So the way that it works is you start at the starting point and you get to the finish. So what you do is it has to do with solving. So it's not like the Rubik's Race board game or whatever that would be called, where it's a whole different idea. This is actually just solving the puzzle. And so what I do, and this is kind of what I did to, to get into it and think about it before I actually put this all together, was that you take whatever your average of 100 is, add a second or two seconds, depending on how easy you want to make it. The more seconds you give, the easier it's going to be. And you do solve. So you need something to give you scrambles, whether it is a timing app or, I don't know, someone else scramble it for you if you don't have a timing app. But And if you get below the time that you set, let's say it's a second above your average of 100, you move forward one spot. If you get above that time, or I guess match it, then your turn's over. So let's say I'm solving with this one, this is a uh, Maying, and I solve below my average of 100, below again, and then I get above it. So that's that. Next person goes. And I do one solve and then, oh, I got above that time, so I do the next one, and it keeps going from there until you get to the finish line. And that's pretty much it. Now, for a two-player, obviously, it's exactly how I'm doing right now, where each person has their cube and moves forward. That's more of a kind of relaxing way of doing it, because it can take a while to get through the entire board, especially if you're waiting for someone else to solve. Now, it's nice to watch someone else solve and be encouraging with that, if you want it to turn into a more challenging one, what you would do is where everyone's timing at the same time, everyone's getting scrambles, and as you go along, that you are just trying to, if you don't get below that time, you just go as fast as you can, scrambling it, solving it, scrambling it, solving it. So it's almost on the honor basis that someone's timing themselves and watching that, but that could be a little more, a little more energizing and crazy. One thing, if you're playing with multiple people, that instead of just adding a second to your average of 100, do a percentage. Do, let's say, 10% above that. Because if it's one second, well, someone who solves, let's say, average of seven seconds, a one second difference is much bigger gap than if someone solves 20 seconds average. So this kind of balances everything out. And if you are solving at 20 seconds, someone else at 10 seconds, someone at 15, everyone kind of gets to have an equal playing field because you're just trying to beat whatever your average was instead of beat the other person. Now, I wouldn't suggest just using your average of 100 because that's going to take a long time. Unless you want it to take a long time, then go for it. One other thing you can add to this is you can see all the squares are different colors. If you are color neutral and let's say other people are, you can force yourself and say, okay, for this solve I have to do an orange cross or orange on bottom, depending on what method you use. This could work for 3x3, 2x2, 5x5, Mega Mix, whatever puzzle you want to use it on. And that's pretty much it. That is the whole game. It's nothing too crazy, nothing that is has all these crazy rules. It's just solving. You set whatever your time is, and you move forward until you've hit that time. I've thought about making even a bigger thing with cards and you can move backwards or forwards, but at least for now, this is just sort of a basic having a little more fun while you're solving. 
If you think of anything we could add to this or make it a little more different or interesting, definitely leave that in the comment section below. Like I said, I've thought about things where you land on certain spaces, you pick up certain cards, you have to do certain things, and it can really turn into a big flushed out game, but I was afraid of it getting too convoluted instead of just what it is right now. So thank you very much. Like I said, leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future, and as always, stop by speedcomputerview.com for more news and reviews.